Chapter 4. Maps. 4. Maps. You have learned in the previous chapter about the advantages of a globe. However, globe has limitations as well. A globe can be useful when we want to study the Earth as a whole. But, when we want to study only a part of the Earth, as about our country, states, districts, towns and villages, it is of little help. In such a situation we use maps. A map is a representation or a drawing of the Earth's surface or a part of it drawn on a flat surface according to a scale. But it is impossible to flatten a round shape completely. We find that maps are useful to us for various purposes. One map shows a small area and a few facts. Another map may contain as many facts as a big book. When many maps are put together we get an atlas. Atlases are of various sizes, measurements drawn on different scales. Maps provide more information than a globe. They are of different types. Some of them are described below. Let's do. Take an old rubber ball and draw whatever you like all over it. You may also mark North Pole and South Pole on it. Now cut this ball with a knife and try to flatten it. Notice how the drawings are distorted. Physical maps. Maps showing natural features of the earth such as mountains, plateaus, plains, rivers, oceans, etc. are called physical or relief maps. Political maps. Maps showing cities, towns and villages, and different countries and states of the world with their boundaries are called political maps. Thematic maps. Some maps focus on specific information. Such as road maps, rainfall maps, maps showing distribution of forests, industries, etc. are known as thematic maps. Suitable titles are given on the basis of information provided in these maps. There are three components of maps, distance, direction and symbol. Distance. Maps are drawings, which reduce the entire world or a part of it to fit on a sheet of paper. Or we can say maps are drawn to reduced scales. But this reduction is done very carefully so that the distance between the places is real. It can only be possible when a small distance on paper represents on the ground. Therefore, a scale is chosen for this purpose. Scale is the ratio between the actual distance on the ground and the distance shown on the map. For example, the distance between your school and your home is 10 kilometers. If you show this 10 kilometers distance by 2 centimeters on a map, it means 1 centimeter on the map will show 5 kilometers. On the ground, the scale of your drawing will be 1 centimeter equals 5 kilometers. Thus, scale is very important in any map. If you know the scale, you will be able to calculate the distance between any two places on a map. When large areas like continents or countries are to be shown on a paper, then we use a small scale. For example 5 centimeters. On the map shows 500 kilometers. Of the ground, it is called a small scale map. When a small area like your village or town is to be shown on paper, then we use a large scale that is 5 centimeters. On the map shows 500 meters only on the ground. It is called a large-scale map. Large-scale maps give more information than small-scale maps. Let's do. Look at the figure 4. 1. There is a scale. It may be used for measuring distance between places. For example the distance between the well and the tree is 5 centimeters. It means that the actual distance is 50 meters. Now the distance between the PO A to Karim's house E is 12 centimeters. It means 120 meters on the ground but you cannot fly like a bird directly from E to A. You will have to walk on the road. Let us measure the total walking distance from E to C, then C to M, M to B and B to A. At all these distances. This will be the total walking distance from Karim's house to the post office. Figure 4. 1. Map of a village. Direction. Most maps contain an arrow marked with the letter and at the upper right hand corner. This arrow shows the north direction. It is called the North Line. When you know the North, you can find out other directions, for example East, West and South. There are four major directions, North, South, East and West, Figure 4. 2. A. Uh, they are called Cardinal Points. Other four intermediate directions are Northeast, NE, Southeast, SE, Southwest, SW, and Northwest, NW. We can locate accurately with the help of these intermediate directions. Find out the following directions from the figure 4. 1. At the direction of the community center, the playground from Vikas's house, B. The direction of school from shops. Figure 4. 2. A. Uh, cardinal directions. We can find out the direction of a place with the help of a compass. It is an instrument used to find out main directions. Its magnetic needle always points towards north-south direction. Figure 4. 2. B. Figure 4. 
2b a compass symbols it is the third important component of a map it is not possible to draw on a map the actual shape and size of different features such as buildings roads bridges trees railway lines or a well so they are shown by using certain letters shades colors pictures and lines these symbols give a lot of information in a limited space with the use of these symbols maps can be drawn easily and are simple to read even if you don't know and therefore cannot ask someone for directions you can collect information from maps with the help of these symbols maps have a universal language that can be understood by all there is an international agreement regarding the use of these symbols these are called conventional symbols some of the conventional symbols are shown in the figure 4 3 figure 4 3 conventional symbols various colors are used for the same purpose for example, generally blue is used for showing water bodies, brown for mountain, yellow for plateau, and green is used for plains. Sketch. A sketch is a drawing mainly based on memory and spot observation and not to scale. Sometimes a rough drawing is required of an area to tell where a particular place is located with Suppose, you want to go to your friend's house, but you don't know the way. Your friend may make a rough drawing to show the way to his house. Such a rough drawing is drawn without scale, and is called a sketch map. Plan. A plan is a drawing of a small area on a large scale. A large scale map gives a lot of information, but there are certain things which we may sometimes want to know, for example the length and breadth of a room, which can't be shown in a map. At that time, we can refer drawings drawn to scale called a plan. Figure 4. 4. Sunderpur village and its surrounding areas. Look at the figure 4. 4 and find out. I, in which direction is the river flowing? E, what kind of road passes by the side of village Dumri? E, on what type of railway line is Sunderpur situated? IV, on which side of the railway bridge is the police station situated? B, on which side of the railway line do the following lie? A Chatri. B, church. C, pond. D, mosque. E, river. F, post and telegraph office. G, graveyard. Exercise. 1. Answer the following questions briefly. Of what are the three components of a map? B. What are the four cardinal directions? C. What do you mean by the term, the scale of the map? D. How are maps more helpful than a globe? E. Distinguish between a map and a plan. F. Which map provides detailed information? G. How do symbols help in reading maps? 2. Tick the correct answers. Of maps showing distribution of forests are I physical map, E thematic map, E political map. B the blue color is I water bodies, E mountains, E plains. C a compass is used. I to show symbols. E to find the main direction. E to measure distance. D a scale is necessary. I for a map, E for a sketch, E for symbols. 1. Draw a plan of your classroom and show the teacher's table, blackboard, desks, door and windows. 2. Draw a sketch of your school and locate the following. At the principal's room. B. Your class. The playground. D. The library. E. Some big trees. F. Drinking water. 1. Make the plan, in the space given below, of a fun park where you can enjoy several activities. For example swings, slides, seesaw, merry-go-round, boating, swimming, looking into funny mirrors,